This is WTCN TV Metro Media 11. And now the Stuart A. Lindman News. That's the news. Crap! Good heavens! Hi, from Channel 11 in the Twin Cities. This is the 530 edition of News Center 11. <laughs> Fastest growth. Care 11 News. 70 years. That's how long our TV station has had the privilege of sharing a place in this community. And on this special anniversary, we want to take some time to reflect on the people, the stories, and the milestones that led us all to this moment in time. We have been through a lot together over the years. And because we're a TV station, we have some pretty incredible footage of our time together. From the everyday moments to the events that made history. From the heartbreaking to the heartwarming. And in the next hour, we're going to look at our collective history as a station and as a community. And as part of that, we're going to reconnect with some people who were important to both, including familiar faces around here for decades, like Paul Majors. How would you describe your 20 years? I would describe it as the most rewarding and enjoyable 20 years of my career, easily. But we begin by going back even further to the early 1950s when the real draw for our audience had nothing to do with news. John Croman has a look at CARE 11 before it was CARE 11. Channel 11 began beaming signals in 1953. At first, two TV stations shared that spot on the dial. WTCN broadcast from the Calhoun Beach Hotel in Minneapolis part of the day. And the rest of the time, people saw WMIN, studios in the Ham Building in St. Paul. WTCN. In 1955, the two merged into one station. WTCN became part of the H.M. Bittner Group. By 1957, the station had been purchased by Time Life Broadcasting and had its first bona fide news team. Mel Chaz, Stuart A. Lindman, and Frank Butel with all the news from WTCN TV's expanded news gathering facility. The weather maps were quite primitive by today's standards. Well, everybody, three more high school basketball teams. And the scores, rudimentary at best. But the station's real draw was entertainment for children. Hey, stay tuned now for Dave Lee. He'll be along with lots of fun and frolic and stuff. With characters like Sergeant Scotty, Wrangler Steve, Captain Eleven, Merle and the Squirrel, and the biggest one of all... Casey Jones Express. Now arriving on track 11. The legendary Roger Awesome, better known as Casey Jones. And we were beating the other stations that were running news and weather and sports at that time. Shows you who was controlling the dial back in 1953-54. It was the children. In those days, kids demanded very sophisticated humor. In 1965, Chris Craft Industries bought WTCN. While the world was changing quickly in the 60s, the technology used to capture those events lagged behind. The news was still shot and edited on film. You've got about 20 seconds of wind and then it runs out and you have to rewind it. So you had to make sure that when you were shooting that you didn't start too soon and it would stop right in the middle of an important shot. The 60s also brought professional baseball to Minnesota. And for years, fans could find the Twins on WTCN with play-by-play -play from Halsey Hall. pop-up down the right field line, and it may be in there. A new decade, a new owner. Metro Media bought WTCN in 1971. Metro Media, in 1973, the company broke ground on new studios in Golden Valley with a bang. After 21 years, Channel 11 had a place of its own. Boy, well, how to do this? But it hadn't lost its colorful characters from the 1950s, like Chef Hank Meadows and all-around talent Mel Jam. Here is the newest thing in tanning. It's called cool tan. It wasn't all about making money. The station also reached out to the community with the annual MD telethon and a weekly public affairs show, Concern, with veteran Stuart A. Lendeman. All-Star Wrestling! At other times, Channel 11 studios were filled with sweaty giants, legends in their own time. High school sports found a home here as well. Scar! The daytime tradition continued with Warren Martin and Nancy Nelson's What's New. Meanwhile, in the newsroom... Live from Channel 11 in the Twin Cities. The weather map still left much to be desired, but the talent wasn't bad. These have dissipated today and moved into Nevada. On March 5th, 1979, a major milestone. 
WTCN joined the NBC network. Celebrities invaded the Crystal Court to welcome the newest member of the Peacock family, and the local news took on a fresh look. News Center 11 boasts a staff of over 60 dedicated professionals hand-picked from more than 2,000 applicants. In 1983, the Gannett Corporation bought Channel 11 and reshuffled the talent deck. New faces with plenty of humor to spare. Uh, I'm Paul Majors, but for all the clothes I have on, it really doesn't matter. I could be anyone. <laughs> but we'll take your word for it. You're Paul Majors, and yeah. I'm Diana Pierce. The Winter Carnival became an annual ritual, as did the live coverage of the Aquatennial, the State Fair, the Toys for Tots campaign, and a program devoted to recognizing volunteers. Thank you, and good evening, and welcome to the first annual 11 Who Care Awards. In 1985, the anchors began dancing to a new tune and a new set of call letters. By the mid-80s, NBC's primetime programming was also starting to show promise, more or less. Robert Blake in his <laughs> explosive return to TV. God bless you. <laughs> Jerry's still out on that one. 1986 brought yet another set of call letters. K -A -R -E. Care TV spent the next decade building a strong national reputation and news. Over the next 17 years, Care 11 created a lot of enduring images as it became known for award-winning storytellers and photojournalists. To move back? <laughs> yeah. Documentaries oh. that gave us a closer look at the rich and famous. Mm, yes. Highly acclaimed yes. local shows like Whatever <laughs> and Minnesota Bound. And unprecedented in-depth news coverage that captured everyday heroes like Jake Empey, a boy battling epilepsy. Thousands are believed dead in the worst attack on America since Pearl Harbor. And in the turbulent times of the new millennium, CARE 11 has remained front and center, at times right in the middle of the drama. So there you have it. Two studios, three names, five owners, and countless faces. But CARE 11's persona has remained pretty much intact over the years, doing our best to reflect the communities we serve. For CARE 11 News, I'm John Croman. That brings us to the year 2000 and the onset of so many events that ended up shaping many of our lives. When we come back, a look at some of the biggest stories since the turn of the century and one event caught live on camera that longtime viewers will likely never forget. It was controlled chaos. Uh, this is something that the station had never done before and really no telev television station has done anything like this before. But first, a CARE classic to take you to break. I'm Alicia Lewis. The year 1953. This was the beginning of WTCN and the Jack Thayer Corner Dance Store was a thing. It was live TV in the afternoon with music and dancing. By the way, Jack Thayer later became president of NBC Radio. Thank you for joining us. 20 years ago, I realized a lifelong dream when I joined the CARE 11 team. Back then, Friends and ER dominated the airwaves, and Jesse Ventura governed the state. I knew I was walking into a station with a rich history, but no one could have known what was to come when it comes to the events or the way we cover them. Here's Chris Harapsky. The new millennium started without a bang. Happy New Year and Y2 OK. Thankfully, but not long after, four bangs shook the world. The deadliest attack on U.S. soil leading to the war on terror. That is the future! The in 2002, another plane crashed. U.S. Senator Paul Wellstone and seven others on board died in Eveleth. The tragedy felt from Minnesota to Washington. Here is the very latest. In August of 2007, the nation was reminded that terror comes in many forms. But it just completely gave out. The bridge started, started shaking and then it was a complete free fall. The 35W bridge collapsed during rush hour in Minneapolis. 13 people died, 145 injured, a wake-up call for America's infrastructure. Years later, another infamous collapse. And yet another. This one felt around the world. Bad housing loans and toxic banking trigger the Great Recession. Unemployment hits 10%. Home foreclosures pile up by the millions. I will be the Democratic nominee. In St. Paul, then U.S. Senator Barack Obama accepts the Democratic nomination for president. The U.S.'s first African-American president serves two terms. In 2016, our prince lost his life in his White House. His death deemed an accidental overdose of the powerful narcotic fentanyl. Later that same year, a decades-old mystery solved 
a chilling confession as Danny Heinrich tells authorities how he kidnapped and murdered 11-year-old Jacob Wetterman. By this time, the internet enters adolescence. This is how you turn it on. Our phones become mobile, mini computers with cameras, sprouting a new world of social media. It would change the way news is gathered and covered. Unrest across America grows as more and more instances of police brutality are caught on video. Minneapolis becomes the epitome in the episode, when a shackled man named George Floyd is slowly murdered by officers sworn to protect. Protests lead to chaos. Three nights in May of 2020 become among the most destructive events in U.S. history. All of this happening during a viral pandemic. The SARS-CoV-2 virus changed the way we worked, ate, shopped, parented, schooled, and broadcast the news. That leads to distrust, dismay, and disarray. We fight like hell. A controversial like president, hell. a consequential act. It leaves us with an ending still uncertain. In the last 23 years, those are the moments that rocked us. And Care 11 covered them. But we also covered these. The everyday events. I believe that we that got us through. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. Talk about life-changing times. Absolutely. And when we come back, a look back at one of the most memorable moments in our station's history. Plus the highly unusual decision at the time to broadcast the weather outside. Well, one of the news directors said, Paul, if you're out in the backyard, at least you'll get the current weather right. <laughs> and that, uh, <laughs> sometimes I screwed that up too. Stay with us for a look back with some of the most recognizable faces of CARE 11, plus what Paul Douglas, Diana Pierce, and Paul Majors are up to now. I'm Jason Hackett. Let's talk about the years 1984 and 1994. That's when CARE 11's two longest running franchises began. First, Randy Shaver and the Prep Sports Extra, highlighting the best of Minnesota high school football. At 40 years, it may be the longest running TV news franchise in the country. And then, Grow With Care. That sprouted with Belinda and Bobby and continued with Garden Stories that ran 52 weeks a year for 29 years. Today, its Facebook page alone has just under 85,000 members. That's a lot of green thumbs. From the actual touchdown at the this date time. is July 18th, 1986. The time, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That's when we broadcast a tornado live on the air from start to finish in the Fridley area. After it was over, we heard countless stories of people at Sears, at the mall, Best Buy, anywhere where there was a television on glued to our coverage. Max Messner was the veteran helicopter pilot and Tom Empey was the young photojournalist. They were not out chasing storms that day, but what they found was amazing to witness. It was one of those live events in television news that those who saw it will never forget. I mean, it's crazy, it's a tornado, you should run you know, for the basement. But the twist in this twister is that one news crew did not run for the basement. This is spectacular. This is spectacular. We have to breathe thousands of feet in the air. It was July 18th, 1986, the first day of the Aquatennial in Minneapolis. Sky 11 was dispatched to shoot aerials of the big block party on Hennepin Avenue. All of a sudden, I heard from the assignment desk that there was a funnel cloud and that Sky 11 was on the way. Our news helicopter changed course and made a little weather history. Normally, if we have any video of a tornado, it would be from the ground. But this gave us the perspective from above. There's other spectacular video from other vantage points, but there has never been, to the best of my knowledge, a repeat of that vantage point anywhere in the world. And the fact that it was happened just before the 5 o'clock news and it was on live during the 5 o'clock show was even more remarkable. As you can see, there is the tornado. It is indeed on the ground. It was remarkable. It was controlled chaos. Uh, this is something that the station had never done before, and really no telev television station has done anything like this before. 
Minnesotans sat in the safety of their living rooms for more than 20 minutes and watched photographer Tom Eppie's video of the weather monster slowly scraping across Fridley in the northern suburbs, while pilot Max Mesmer described the scene. Hey, another touchdown, another touchdown. How close was Sky 11 to the ferocious funnel? For 20 years in our hallway at CARE 11, next to the cases of awards, has hung this picture taken by one of our viewers. I'm going to have to leave this area here. The debris is drifting my way here. I'm going to have to leave the area. One of the things that I remember being startled about was um, uh, there was lots of little debris in the air, little pieces of, uh, you know, whatever flying around up there, and you could hear some of that pinging against the helicopter, the bubble of the helicopter. Max got a lot of credit for flying Sky 11 that day, as he should have, but consider what Tom Empey did. He was sitting in the back seat twisted sideways with a 30-pound camera and lens on his shoulder shooting out the side window. So I sat that way for about an hour and 45 minutes. There was no reporter in the chopper that day. Max became the voice of the tornado. We're about three quarters of a mile from the actual touchdown at this What you didn't know is that Max had no broadcast microphone on his headset that day, so Tom took what we call the shotgun mic off his camera, passed it over the back seat, and Max just kind of stuck it under his arm. So when he's holding the microphone under his arm, he's got the, uh, the collector in one hand and the stick in the other. I mean, he had a, a, all arms and legs were busy up there. And Tom and Max became busy in their new roles as local media heroes, faded on TV and radio we, interviews. We had to be there. It was one of those things that, that we, we both decided to go for. And... They heard storms of praise in person five days later in the Aquitennial's biggest event. Max, Tom, and Sky 11 were the stars of the torchlight parade. With 2020 hindsight, 20 years later, were they frightened following that photogenic funnel? No, <laughs> I wasn't in fear of my life. I was excited, you know, it was incredible. There's no question as it's going on, you're looking at it going, wow. But, um, you know, neither, again, I don't think either one of us uh, really realized how important or how incredible it was until the whole ride was over and they took the Twin Cities along for the ride with them. Alan Constantini, Carol of the News. Well, that tornado and every other weather story has been told in this backyard. In fact, this year marks the 40th anniversary of the CARE 11 backyard. Back in 1983, we decided to knock down this wall and come outside. But you have to ask yourself, why would you want to do the weather in Minnesota seasons outdoors? Ah, what a cruel, cold, crystalline twist. I was just kidding, by the way. The whole suggestion of doing the weather outside. I wish I could take that back, but you've done a remarkable job with the backyard bell. Hey, look, at the time, 1983, I think we were fourth in the ratings. We were getting beaten by Leave it to Beaver reruns. We had nothing to lose, and viewers loved seeing the weather people being tortured outside in the weather. The Carol Levin backyard has had a few big makeovers in the 40 years of existence, but has been a great office for me for 30 years and for my colleagues. It's going to be considerably cooler. Uh, you've heard raining cats and dogs. This is raining cats, dogs, and canaries. Paul, who still writes for the Star Tribune, does radio in Duluth and is running yet another meteorology company. The snow continues to fall. Was out in this bone chilling backyard for 11 years. <laughs> It got so cold a couple of nights that my mouth froze up. I don't know if that's happened to you, but it sounded like I had been drinking. I was slurring my words. And you weren't drinking that I was night. not, <laughs> no, I wasn't, I don't think I was drinking. We've had so many critters, lots of big bugs that I scare Randy with, tons of birds. I mean, so many birds since we got the waterfall. The flower-filled sunny backyard, quite a cry from weather done inside on small white boards using grease pencils and pointers. Not only has the presentation changed, but the way we forecast has also evolved incredibly. We had fewer weather models back then, which made it a little bit easier. Now we're sort of drowning in weather models. Now the appetite is so for everything instantaneously right now. Right. But the weather story is still the same. We're storytellers and hopefully there will always be a need for flesh and blood meteorologists who can interpret the weather, explain what's happening, why should I care? Something an app will never do. We all have our weather apps on our phones, right? Apps are appetizers. You want the full course, you want the big meal, you gotta tune in and watch Belinda. I hope that need never goes away. 
It's great to hear from Paul Douglas, just one of many personalities over the course of 70 years. I've been here for over 40 of them. Diana Pierce was here more than 30. From the Action Center of the Twin Cities. I came to CARE 11 in 1983. Diana Pierce. All of the people evacuated from the She was one half of what would become a very dynamic duo. Yeah, but we'll take your word for it. Both Paul and I were 29 at the time, so we weren't quite youth news, but we were younger than anybody else, basically, in the Twin Cities. Someone has kidnapped. Diana Pierce continued to rule the Twin Cities airwaves for more than 32 years. She was a driving force in the community, too, lifting others up in our 11 Who Care event and keeping them healthy with the Diana Pierce Family Mile at the Twin Cities. Marathon. And everything she did, she did with poise, grace, and humility. And in 2009, her incredible achievements were recognized. When I went into the Broadcasting Hall of Fame, I made a list of everybody that I had worked with. And a lot of the speeches, it's all about, well, I did this and I did that. No, it was a team effort. It was always a team effort. Diana retired from CARE in 2016, and she's certainly been no wallflower since then. I have taken up photography. The lens that I use, it's a 105 macro, is that it gets right into the heart of the flower. And when you see it intensely up close, that's when I feel like a whole new area is opened up. And that I find fascinating. Diana is being modest again. Her beautiful photographs of flowers aren't just for fun. She's selling her artwork now and winning awards in photography contests. But she's never left her passion for journalism behind. As the president of the Upper Midwest Emmy Foundation, she's determined to see the next generation of journalists succeed. It is so fun to see the quality of the students' work coming in from the five-state area. The foundation offers scholarships to students, something also near and dear to her heart. It's important to me to be connected to that because I had a scholarship. I needed a scholarship. And you'll likely see Diana around because this is still her home. Coming to Minnesota all those years ago proved to be life-changing. I knew that coming here was the best thing that ever happened to me, and it was. It was. In the next half hour, we're going to catch up with many more familiar faces, some of whom have gone on to do some pretty interesting things. Plus, Paul Majors talks about the story that impacted him the most, that he still thinks about, even after all of these years. God, every time I think about it, I just, uh, I get emotional. But first, another CARE classic. I'm Reggie Wilson. The year... 1953. Well, hi everybody. Three more. And as you can see, showing sports scores on TV has certainly evolved. In the beginning, this is how Frank Butel read the scores. The Cardinals eight, the Pirates five. They were actually written out on paper and scrolled through by hand for Frank to read and the audience to see. It wasn't fancy, but hey, it worked back in the day. This is WTCN TV Metro Media 11. And now the Stuart A. Lindman News. That's the news. Crap! Good heavens! Live from Channel 11 in the Twin Cities. This is the 530 edition of News Center 11. -E. Twin Cities' fastest growth. CARE 11 News. Welcome back to CARE 11's 70th anniversary special. We have had a lot of on-air personalities over the year at our station, and every one of them hoped to connect on some level with the community. But there is one person in particular that seemed to have hit a special chord with viewers. And in the 20 years he was here, you could say everything changed for our station. Now, the Twin Cities most watched newscast, News 11 with Paul Majors. There was a time when Paul Majors was one of the top local news anchors in the country. We do have some breaking news to report. But not right away. Good evening, President Clinton is promising he'll deliver federal dollars. When Majors showed up in the Twin flag. Cities in 1983, the 10 o'clock newscast on Channel 11 was in fourth place, far behind WCCO and KSTP and Star Trek reruns on Channel 9. What bothered me about it was there were only 12 episodes of the original program. So people would rather watch an episode of Star Trek for the 150th time rather than watch us. I remember walking into the boss, Tom Kirby, and saying, you know, it would be actually be cheaper if we just went to the people's homes who were watching and read them the news. 
in their living room rather than go to the expense of broadcasting. Now, from the Action Center of the Twin Cities, News 11 with Paul Majors. What happened after Diana that Pierce. is nothing short Tom of a White TV news sports. miracle. Thanks in part to Majors, have, uh, Diana Pierce, and, and so uh, many uh, others, plus place. strong primetime programming by NBC, Channel 11's rise in the news ratings was fast and furious. This is really spectacular. The thing that cemented the deal was the tornado. It put care on the map. And I think it created a great deal of trust that we became the station to turn to. And that's what happened. For my career, my best years were at CARE. My most enjoyable, interesting years were at CARE. And he had a lot of fun leading the CARE news team. Oh, oh, the count loves Halloween. Growing up in a large family and being the youngest, Paul loved pranks. He pulled off his share. He reveled in the camaraderie of the newsroom. And that genuine love for each other was how CARE's audience connected. There was just a lack of pretentiousness. I always used to hear that about CCO, that they were pretty pretentious. And I have to agree. <laughs> but Paul was the consummate pro. He knew the news inside and out. And that's what made him the best. He was trustworthy, authentic, and empathetic. And when he left CARE in 2003, he left with one story that he could not let go. The story that's touched me the most in the 20 years I've been here was the uh, kidnapping, the abduction of Jacob Wetterling. Paul Majors has been with us from the beginning. We finally have answers to nearly three decades of questions surrounding the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling. When his body was found in 2016, what was your reaction? Boy, like it is right now, I remember just staring at what I was reading. I was relieved for Jacob's parents. I was relieved for Patty Wetterling that there's some bit of closure. God, every time I think about it, I just, uh, I get emotional. Just the innocence of kids out on a country road. Three boys riding their bikes after they go to the video store. Yeah. And that happens. That's the story that changed me. Yeah made me more empathetic. Hello and welcome to your CBSLA.com News Brief. I'm Paul Majors. Paul left care for CBS in Los Angeles in December of 2003. He says the culture in the LA newsroom was terrible. Every man for himself. When I first got there for that first year, I would lie awake. I would say out loud, what have I done? Feeling sorry for myself. Like, why is this so messed up? Paul anchored at KCBS in L.A. for 13 years before retiring in 2017. It was at that time he underwent treatment for alcoholism, a battle he's still winning today. Nowadays, Paul spends his time in California, enjoying retirement and his family. He will turn 70 next year, and he looks back at his TV career in Minnesota with heartfelt appreciation. I would describe it as the most rewarding and enjoyable 20 years of my career, easily. It was great to catch up with Paul, and we have more Where Are They Nows to come. But there was another star at the station long before news was the thing. Coming up, Casey Jones and his stop in station history. Boyd Hooper will share Casey's story, and when it comes to storytelling, there is no one like Boyd. We chat with Boyd about what it's been like to share your like stories for decades now. But first, the origin story of what became a brand new show here in our CARE 11 Look Back. I'm Jana Shortle, and the year is 2016. Day one. Here Breaking the News is born, a show we created to break the mold of the traditional newscast, one that commits itself to talking with you, not at you. In seven years, we watched our first Vikings analysts go from kindergarten to high school. What have you learned? I sat with at least 200 first graders to hear them tell me things why? like why we adults need recess. We celebrated together when we banded as one little family to raise thousands of dollars for local underdog organizations. Thanks for the first seven years. It's been a privilege. I'm Reggie Wilson. The year is 1973, and this microphone drops from the rafters. 
The television station WTCN had moved from its home in the Calhoun Beach Club to its new digs in Golden Valley. Along with news broadcasts, Studio A hosted Vern Gagne's All-Star Wrestling, featuring ring legends like The Crusher, Mad Dog Vashon, and the Baron Von Raschke. Before each match, a microphone would drop from the light grid from the ring announcer, Marty O'Neill, to introduce the combatants. Wrestling fans, I'm getting out of here! 50 years later, 44 years after the last show was taped here, that, that microphone, microphone still hangs, hangs from the rafters. All-Star Wrestling, live commercials, children's programming. There was so much more than news that came out of our studios in the early years. Case in point, Casey Jones. Real name, Roger Awesome. Boyd Hooper takes us back in time to a children's show that impacted countless Twin Cities kids. Casey Jones Express, now arriving on track 11. Roger Awesome was just 26 years old when he first rolled into our lives, but it wasn't long until he was everyone's old buddy. Are you all set for a good lunch? A lunchtime institution for a generation of Twin Cities kids. Oh, wow, look at the size of this dog, kid. Though Roger Awesome seemed born to be Casey Jones, he got his start as a radio announcer in Detroit Lakes a craft he learned at McAllister College, where he counted among his closest friends, John Gallus, the future Clancy the Cop on WCCO, and Walter Mondale, the future Vice President of the United States. We used to sit in my uh, dorm room all night telling stories, and we'd record programs and listen to the programs and then re-record them. And I think he was ready before television was ready. After a brief off-air stint at Channel 4, he moved up the dial to the brand new Channel 11 in 1953. A year later, he came up with the idea for Casey Jones, reasoning kids like to wave at engineers. There were very few children's shows on it in, in those early days. But there had been cowboys and there had been clowns, but there had never been a, a railroad engineer. His first sidekick was Joe the Cook, played by another McAllister buddy, Chris Wiedis. Hi, Roundhouse! But it was Awesome's partnership with Lynn Dwyer, playing Roundhouse Rodney, Got that set the standard for creativity on Twin Cities TV. I did it! I turned everything upside down! Those were the experimental days, those early days of television, you know, where... There were no books, there were no courses <laughs> on how you do television. You, you just did it. At their peak, Casey and Roundhouse were on Channel 11 three hours a day. The top-rated Lunch with Casey, a morning show. Wake up with Casey and Roundhouse. And another hour after school. Talking in my winter underwear. And he had this kindness and this appeal and this warmth and... Uh, Kids bought it up like that. Now, let's drink our you right now. In the end, it was a ban on commercials by kids' TV hosts that derailed Casey after 19 years on the air. I was really lost there for a while. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Awesome went in and out of the restaurant business, attempted a comeback on Channel 29, then in 1986, settled back into radio. KLKS, Breezy Point, Minnesota, serving our Brainerd Lakes area. Leaving the cities for a cabin he built himself on a lake near Brainerd, down a road named in his honor. I've made a lot of good friends. I've had a, a very interesting life, and I've loved my work all my life, so I'm a lucky man. Hey, here comes the train. Time to say so long, gang. Have a happy day. Goodbye, everybody. As much as Casey Jones helped to find the early days of CARE 11, the man who just shared that story, Boyd Hooper, helped shape the heart of who we are today. Boyd's ability to find and tell the stories of our community with humor, kindness, and intelligence endears him to millions, not just here in Minnesota, but around the world. No celebration of CARE's history would be complete without a word from our most celebrated storyteller. When that music plays, you know you are about to hear what we in the newsroom simply call a Boyd story. What does that mean to you, a Boyd Hooper story? Could you define it? Hmm. I'd like it to be something that touches people's hearts, gives them appreciation for their neighbors, um, 
Some they met and some they haven't yet. Care 11 viewers first met Boyd in the summer of 1998. The official word from the Sheriff's Department tonight, four homes totally destroyed. He joined the team as a general assignment reporter and for years shared a lot of bad news. Some of the residents could see the flames from blocks away. And found himself gravitating in the opposite direction. I think it's part of balance. There's good versus evil and I think if we're going to cover the ills in our community, then we also have a responsibility to cover the good. For decades now, Boyd's been finding the good with help from you, our viewers, who share 20 to 30 story tips with him a week. Probably 95% of the stories I do have been generated by our viewers. He takes those tips and turns them into unforgettable stories that make us laugh. <laughs> and oh my goodness, how many times have they made us cry? There's been a lot of tears shed on these steps. Over the last 27 years, his stories have won every major her. journalism award. But recently, Boyd's own story took a hard turn with a diagnosis of multiple myeloma. With news like that, many would walk away from work, not Boyd. And I did think about it. All right, you know, what's, I have a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. um, what should I be doing with whatever number of years I have left? And I can't think of anything that I would rather do than this. Lucky us. One more note, Boyd wanted to make sure we did not talk about his work without acknowledging the incredibly talented photographers he works with. They make Boyd's stories and all of our stories absolutely shine. We're gonna share some of their award-winning work next, along with our final Where Are They Nows with some faces you might remember. But first, more Care Classics. I'm Sharon Yu, and the year is 1968. This is what the St. Paul Winter Carnival Parade looked like. It actually started in the 1800s as one of the oldest civic celebrations in the country, reportedly partly in response to those who called Minnesota as uninhabitable as Siberia. And check out the State Fair Midway in the 1970s. A fair archivist tells us the double Ferris wheel was a popular ride at the time, and sideshows were still a common occurrence. Welcome back. It's almost like you, the viewers, have become part of our news photography team, whether you're sending us weather photos, family pictures, or nature pictures. Our That's So Minnesota photography group on Facebook has more than 75,000 members. Powerful images have always meant a lot to us. Kent Erdahl shows us how they became a part of our legacy as a TV station. From paddling beyond boundaries. Now this is a flotilla. In the boundary waters. Holy cow. To shattering perceptions in a brisk Lake Harriet. Nice balmy 34 degrees in here. Photojournalism has long been the line connecting the land of 10,000 lakes to Care 11's land of 10,000 stories and beyond. The one thing that I hope most of our viewers understand is how much we really do care. Chief it's photographer like Chad Nelson's care runs deep. <laughs> he helped bring this fish tail to the surface in 2020. There you go. And he's captured enough memorable moments to earn him two National Photographer and Editor of the Year awards. My gnome was gone. But it turns out he's just the latest in a long line of acclaimed work dating back to the 1980s. With more equipment, dedication, and professionalism than ever before. Cheesy promos aside, when Gannett bought the station in 1983, it really did expand its commitment to photojournalism. It actually is the beta cam that I got when I started. Former photojournalist Ethan Hart says they also invested heavily in gear. Spent a lot of time being weighed down by that thing. But the strategy took off. Within three years, the entire staff began gaining national recognition for emotional, in-depth reporting. Jake, stay with me, buddy. The AIDS epidemic. One small step. And the bar never stopped rising. Now we got drones. Ron Stover spent several years traveling the state for care in the air, and he spent several decades traveling beyond our borders to capture stories for the Earth Care series. I went to Antarctica for a story. It was colder here than it was there. Speaking of cold. When I first came here, I wanted to leave. It took Gary Knox a bit to appreciate the level of care Minnesota weather coverage demands. I believe it was the blizzard of 97, 13-inch snowstorm, 
followed by another 15-inch snowstorm, but I stuck it out and won the best decision I ever made. By 2001, he too was named National Photographer of the Year. Thanks to his ability to capture stories in all seasons. I didn't touch my ring the whole night, and then one time I touched it. Just ploop. That's all it was, and right down the hole it went. In the decades since, he's been behind the lens during some of the Care 11 I team's biggest stories. You're able to shine a light on injustice and bring about change. Of course, change has also come to photojournalism. I'm a multimedia journalist, so I shoot, write, and edit my own stories. Heidi Wigdahl knows what that may sound like. Paul and I, I've been assured this does not look stupid, though. <laughs> I think it's going to stay till spring. But no matter how stiff the challenge, her work stands up to the legacy that came before. The through line is just that we always get to the heart of a story. That is something that is timeless, that never changes. What has changed over the years? Our talent. You've seen a lot of familiar faces go off to new challenges. Rena Sarginopoulos caught up with some of them to see where are they now. It was uh, once upon a time, a long time ago. It may feel that way to him, but many of you probably remember Rick Capcella quite well. He spent 21 years here at CARE as a reporter, investigative journalist, and anchor. Thanks for joining us. When he left in 2009, Rick is what you call a serial entrepreneur, starting four companies. The one you'll recognize best is Bring Me the News, which he eventually sold. Now he's down to just one job, a company called IEN. Some clients now hire us only for our research capabilities. Some hire us, you know, for strategy alone. Um, most hire us across that spectrum at IEN for research strategy and storytelling across the board. We have so much more. Each and every day that I got to go live from the Minnesota State Fair was a good day for me. This Minnesota girl, her dazzling smile and positive energy, spent 15 years at CARE 11. When Roxanne Battle left, she went on to do media at her church where she created a television show, wrote Christmas pageants for the kids, and then finally did what was in her heart write a book. And I'd had this idea that I was germinating while I was at CARE or after my son was born. Let's go back and look at those formative years. Let's go back and look at what I was going through at the time, um, which was a divorce, and, and talk about how I found joy or pockets of joy, those fleeting moments when you feel like everything's going to be okay. Before long, they were gone. Away from Longtime reporter Ken Speak made us feel like it was going to be okay school, with his signature voice and storytelling style that stood out to viewers. Daisy may look a little hefty. It was West Nile that, that forced Ken to retire after 28 so years here at CARE, but he is still action. going strong. Ken Speak, CARE 11 News, Cross Lake. Chris, you have Some of CARE's talented reporters have moved up to the big leagues, if you will. Highest volume of calls. Adrian Broadus is an award-winning reporter and anchor who spent more than seven years here and now works as a correspondent with CNN. And could see the black smoke rising. And Joe Fryer, another one of Minnesota's own, got his dream job at CARE, spending six years here as an award-winning storyteller before eventually moving on to NBC, where he's been for the last 10 years. I've been working on the Saturday Today Show, doing segments like pop start and the weekend boost and i just found out that i've officially been promoted to saturday today feature anchor it was kind of quiet up speaking of hollywood and celebrities cares phil johnston was here for a couple years in the late 90s but took a leap of faith to pursue a passion that had always lived inside him and went to film school it kind of worked out for phil and the oscar he's a writer director and producer and mostly what i'm probably known for uh, are the Wreck-It Ralph movies and Zootopia. Phil currently has three projects in the works that he can't discuss yet. Ooh, so secretive. And he may be Hollywood, but he's still got that Minnesota shucks about him. It is kind of a dream come true. And last but, of course, certainly not least, we thought we'd end with a more recent Care 11 face. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Woo. Our interview with Eric oh, Perkins went back on camera. Well, exactly how camera. you'd think it would go. Hi. <laughs> For real, though, Eric started a company called Perk at Play Productions. I wanted to stay creative. I wanted to stay out and about in the communities that had embraced me so. And I wanted to tell the stories of all, all the people and the businesses that, that are here. But I, if there's I, anything I, you I can like, count on. Also, woo we're going down. It's that Perk is. Still, perfect. Sorry, sorry.
We'd like to end tonight by saying from everyone here at CARE 11, we look forward to remaining part of this community for years to come. On whatever platform that might be, YouTube, your phone, you name it. But right now, we want to say goodbye old school. We used to end our broadcast with a salute from members of the community, from schools, clubs, teams, and all kinds of events. So tonight, a salute from us to you. Thank you for trusting us, for tuning in, and for welcoming us into your home for all these years.